Hey everybody, thank you for joining us again. We're the three middle-aged dudes just bullshitting about nothing. This is the Reverend. The theme here. And Grey Mouse One. And we're just going to go ahead and do the Geek Weekend review. Uh, first thing, big anniversary date for a really beloved franchise. March 22nd, 1996 was the release of ta-da, Resident Evil on the original PlayStation. Not that much beloved anymore as far as the whole franchise goes. Well, we're this talking day. on nostalgia here. That's what uh, anniversaries are all about. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, the the thing about Resident Evil is that it wasn't the first uh, survival horror game. Um, actually, not by a long shot. Uh, we were co- we were talking about this before. A theme brought up Alone in the Dark, which was on PC. Uh, on home console before this, there was Clock Tower on the Famicom, but it never saw the light of day here. Uh, in the states, I guess we could even talk about Friday the Thirteenth on the NES if you want to be ah. really about it, All right? <clears throat> but as far Why as dives at Jason, <laughs> I was <gonna> say Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I mean, but as far as the genre goes, Resident Evil pretty much paved the way and they broke the genre wide open for the home console market. Um, Without Resident Evil coming out, there's actually a lot of games afterwards that would, would never see the light of day here, especially in the States. Uh, Fatal Frame is uh, one of them. Uh, Silent Hill, which is another one. Uh, you know, and there's, there's a whole plethora of uh, survival horror games and other games that are kind of in that vein. Uh, Alan Wake uh, is, is a little bit more uh, modern and everything else. But you have a whole bunch of games just that were directly influenced by Resident Evil and its sequels, you know, Resident Evil 2, which was a which is a classic, and also Resident Evil 3 on the PlayStation. You know. It's uh, funny because uh Cole Veronica was one of my favorites yeah. of the whole series. And it was one of those games that I mean, first it came out for the Dreamcast and then later it went to the PlayStation 2. Yep. With the director's cut, and it was one of those games where it just was like, wow, they took Resident Evil, smoothed it out, <clears throat> and then just made it that much better. There was there was a huge jump in graphic fidelity from Resident Evil 3. Actually, from the first one to the second one, there was a huge improvement. Yes, and it was. It, from 3 to, to uh, Code Veronica was again another huge improvement in graphic fidelity for the series. It also helped that Code Veronica showed up on the Dreamcast first. And because of that, it it really showed a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of console players, you know, this is what horror can look like. Um, you can also kind of credit Code Veronica for when Resident Evil started to take that left turn to go ahead and turn itself into an action game. Because, yeah, once you once you gain the ability to go ahead and dual wield in, in Code Veronica, fights weren't actually ever that <laughs> that challenging anymore. It's, it's funny because, well, um, when you had <laughs> Steve, your bullets were limited. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> funny because during that time, everybody was looking like, Leonardo DiCaprio from Titanic. <laughs> yep. But um, nevertheless, um, the Resident Evil series, 20 years, that's a long time. We just, I mean, I've made videos about this before. I wish that this year would have been a Resident Evil 7. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. You know, that, that would have made a lot of sense to me. But to come this far and to actually have ammunition to keep going maybe <laughs> well um i know i i know as far as uh revelations and revelations 2 that that came out a little while ago um they're they're good games but i wouldn't exactly call them survival horror games anymore and i think a lot of people one of the reasons why a lot of people are um celebrating the the HD re-release of Resident Evil 2 is because it they're just bringing it back to their roots. You know, that's one of the things that a lot of people want. They 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 like to be scared. And the zombie 
blah, 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 blah. it hasn't gotten you know any less popular since then it's actually a lot more popular now than it was back in 1996 you know with the walking dead and everything else that's out there oh, yeah you know, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a a great a great uh series that's basically went ahead and it's it, it's run through i think I, I think it's kind of sad that uh, uh, Capcom seems to be um, a little bit more uh, concerned with with putting out either episodic games because that's how they handled uh, Revelations two in in episodes, uh, or Street Fighter Five is an episodic game technically. Yeah, or what they're what they're doing with like um, just going all out to like I said more of an action shooter and everything else, not only with the last few Resident Evils, but if you look at Dead Rising, that's pretty much a, a, a co-op or versus multiplayer action game. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little disappointing to see where their creative people are actually going. But, you know, I'm not going to deny its place in history. It's definitely, definitely opened up the genre for a lot of folks. Any thoughts, Grey Mouse? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have to agree with you guys that <clears throat> after Code Veronica, it took that hard left and kind of turned itself into a action adventure game. And a lot of um, I mean, I have to give what about four and zero. Yeah. Well, four. Four went ahead and it, it kind of showed that hey look we can do this we can we can do this in a style that's not the tank controls and everything else uh, and it's not just uh, static pre-rendered backgrounds with uh, with fixed camera angles and all of that because the the truth of the matter is, is that with these really early 3D games one of the things that I hated dealing with is okay going through a stage or whatnot and then being ambushed or running into certain death because right around the corner where the camera won't turn and I yeah. can't see is a horde of zombies just waiting for me. All right. I remember how they got away with the low time where uh, <coughs> sort of door that you're going through. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> I I know that as far as uh I think I think they have a uh, Resident Evil uh available on the PC and there's a mod that removes all of the doors. <laughs> it just, oh, that's cool. No, I mean, it removes that animation because the thing is, is that it's it's streaming off of the hard drive and it just goes just like that. See, a lot of people weren't um, too keen on the over-the-shoulder views from the later yeah. game. Well, see, Resident Evil was that type of game that started the safe place bullshit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it that per se, because it's like, all right, look, you needed a break yeah. from all of what was coming after you. It wasn't fair at certain points. Yeah, it wasn't. You, you had to, you had, oh, you needed the save room. Some of the games that, that you know, um, one thing that you forgot to mention, um, the Reverend was, uh, um, I just had it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I just completely thought, oh my Resident god. Resident Evil about the save room will kind of be like Pac-Man without the tunnels. <laughs> Pac -Man True. But the I mean, power pellets. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, fuck that. I would never pay. <laughs> no. With Resident Evil, they opened up the doors for like uh, Left 4 Dead type of games as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, Left 4 Dead is a first person shooter. Yeah. I mean, Left 4 Dead was, it's brutal. You cannot go, pat, you know, away from your group or you'll get. Do you think. There, speaking of which, do you think there'll be a co-op Resident Evil game, old school style like that? I, I don't know. Yeah, and the, the <laughs> sad thing about it is that this game right here, especially if you be, do the the B side stories, all right, where they do the alternate stories after yeah. they finished it through, it pretty much shows that they can set the environments up especially right now with online gaming it should be possible um i just 
you know, the, all the multiplayer that I've seen so far, especially for the uh, uh, for the Revelation series, has mostly been versus. Uh, I believe they tried to do the multiplayer co-op thing for Raccoon City, um, but what was happening with that was that the the gameplay mechanics on Raccoon City, as far as being able to to run and shoot at the same time, were kind of janky. So. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where um, I, I I believe a few years ago the the saying that was going around was that Japanese developers uh, can't do first person shooters or they can't do they can't handle it where you're you're shooting and running at the same time and uh, yeah that was one of the games that they showed everybody they're like yeah you know every time you try to aim you have to stop the place <laughs> you know I just hate it when you ran into walls but you <clears throat> stop. You would just keep <laughs> tank tank controls. Yep. It's like, come on, man. This it was just hilarious to me that 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 they kept that until what did they ever stop that? I mean, well, I know I know as far as the tank controls go, everything after four doesn't control like that anymore. So that's that's one thing for sure. Um, but you know the 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 thing with with the tank controls is that I I think that was Resident Evil wasn't the only game that suffered from them. I know Tomb Raider did a lot of 3D games at the time suffered from tank controls. Um, it wasn't until they figured it out later. Hey, look, just give a direction to the control in in reference to the camera or wherever wherever the the character is at, and that should work out fine. Mm -hmm. um, that was my major gripe about Resident Evil games was the camera. It was just, it was horrid. <laughs> <laughs> when you enter a certain area, the camera only be in one place. Yep. Yeah. And when you, it's funny because how it will split. The, uh, one room will be split in two. Like if you enter one side of the room, then the camera will change. It's like, man, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are other great games that did that type of shit. Like um, Legacy of Kane Defiance. Yeah. That game did that shit, and it was annoying. But oh, yeah. it, it was. I know there like, were, yeah, this game is great, but stop doing that. I know there was quite a few places in Legacy of Cain Defiance that I died simply because the camera fucking changed position. Yeah, I mean, I love the game to death, but it's funny because I remember, um, like when I played the first Shenmue game, and I was like, wait, not once did I complain about the camera angle. <clears throat> no matter where you turned, no matter where you were, they centered behind you for the most part unless it was like a scene where you're talking to someone but i was just like wow i've never complained about any camera angle in this game they got it right yeah they also it was also a fully 3d rendered game it wasn't all pre-rendered 2d backgrounds which was a lot of resident evil you know well yeah. i mean final fantasy 7 was pre-rendered backgrounds as well and that's around the same time frame as resident evil uh 97 <laughs> it was when Final Fantasy VII came out, so it was around yeah. that same area. So, yeah. I mean, that's just that was the times, you know, that they were just experimenting with 3D games. Yep, yep. Well, Metal Gear Solid was kind of like an overhead view. Correct. Yeah. And then, but but the thing with Metal Gear Solid was that they had the idea to go ahead and render out everything fully in 3D, mm -hmm. as far as the the maps and everything else goes. It wasn't pre-rendered. Yeah. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't a pre-rendered. Oh, that, that that game couldn't have been. It wouldn't been right it wouldn't have worked it no it could have worked but it would have played a lot like the nes <laughs> yeah. yeah okay yeah. okay fine that version is classic but it would have played a lot like the nes middle gear so it would have been just loading screen after screen after screen man yep yep uh, it would have well loading screens that was the thing thank you what was that well yeah not for uh, 64 yeah. Yeah. Well, Mario 64 kind of showed the way 3D games are supposed to be done. That was this the thing about that game. That game was just like, all right, look, you want to make 3D? This is how to fucking do it. <laughs> that was a, that was a paint, by, uh, paint by number thing, how to do it, man. It's just like, look, this is how you do it. And now, wait a minute. All, most genres learn from <laughs> Nintendo somehow. Yeah. Learn from Nintendo and their games on how to really do shit correctly. Yeah, there are a lot of mechanics that, uh, that uh, people, a lot of industry folks went ahead and they, they took from Nintendo games. Um, especially in 
for Mario and everything else was okay, three D control. All right, full analog control. This is this is the type of shit that you could do. Okay. Like how Mario revolutionized directional pads <coughs> and analog. Yeah, I mean, and the thing about it was that you know up until that point, the analog movement was pretty much okay. I could do full three hundred and sixty movement, but nobody went out of their way to really go ahead and show. All right, no, if you want to sit there and walk slowly, your character can sit there and tiptoe. Mario can tiptoe across an area. <laughs> it can actually be used for something. Oh, right. yeah. You want to sneak past these, those the, sleep the up piranha, yeah, the plants. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, go ahead and tiptoe. It, well, if you ran too, if you try to run too fast in certain places, yeah, you were either going to fall or you're going to wake something up. So you can sneak past them or baby crawl. It was kind of hilarious. <clears throat> but uh, to get back on Resident Evil, it's right. definitely a um, a beloved franchise. Well, um, up until I think Resident Evil Five and Six, they kind of went crazy with it. Well, I can understand. They tried to push the envelope. They did. They did. But it just. I mean, and then I have to agree with you also about the um, Resident Evil Seven. <laughs> I mean, we still have hopes for E Three. You know, there might be. Announcement. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too. What this day? This day and age, Capcom. Well, well, Capcom. I mean, they have. They did some good things, and then they stumble, and then they do some good things, and then they stumble, and then they do some good things. No, they didn't stumble. They saw a clip, and they were like, "All right, one, I'm jump off it." Two. <laughs> no arcade mode in Street Fighter Five. Man, no. come on, dude. Yeah, but what? I, I okay. think that's a that's a that's for another time. Resident <laughs> Evil, Resident <laughs> Evil, you know, twenty years. That I mean, come on, most genre genres, most games didn't even see ten. Most series, yeah, don't even yeah. see that long. So. And I mean, some games do see it and then they stop. Or, or what you see with a lot of series is that they happen to be they get really big on one particular console and once. Once the generation moves on to a new console, they pretty much disappear. Yeah. Uh, a lot of old 16-bit games are like that. Yeah. Uh, but Resident Evil, definitely a great, uh, a great series. I mean, it's been on every every console um, oh ever since uh, the PlayStation. You know, there's even a Game Boy Color version of Re Resident okay. Evil. Um, and it's yeah. ugly. But <laughs> this, all right? <laughs> I mean, um, with, with Resident Evil 7, you know, if they even think about that, I mean, is there enough story left? I mean, they pretty much told... They keep blowing up cities. Yeah, I mean, you know, Raccoon City was, to me, was a... <laughs> I, I, I was, what? You know, and, and then 6 and 7, and you're like, or I'm sorry, 5 and 6, and you're like, what? You know, and then you just well, like... You're surprised on how much story can be squeezed out of a certain franchise. Well, I mean, look... Final Fantasy, maybe. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, although they're not connected, you know, the stories aren't connected, but still. Hey, now wait, they most Mario it. games aren't even connected except the fucking characters. There's yeah, no storyline there. They just keep making games and they just keep making them good, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So with Resident Evil, it's a beloved, um, it's a beloved franchise, franchise, and uh, I like to see it moving forward, you know, into the, you know, so I, I would hope Resident Evil 7, you know, make it happen, Capcom. Do it correctly, Capcom. Don't have that shit episodic. Don't have it, okay, this, okay, this episode you play as this person, this episode you'll play as Chris. No, don't fucking do that. Just bring out the fucking game. C cut out all the DLC and just bring out the full <laughs> game as it's meant to be. I, if you're going to do a Resident Evil 7 and if you are going to announce that E3, just do it correctly. We're going to pull out our wallets and throw cash to it. Yeah. I mean, Resident, really Evil was, Resident Evil was the game that actually got me into the survival horror um, genre. Hmm. It's one of the games that did. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good series. It's a good franchise. And I like, like I said, I like to see it continue. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, a lot of us want to see a lot of the old uh, franchises come back. And I, I would love to see a uh, new Resident Evil. Uh, whether or not it's a seven or another spin-off series or whatnot, it's really up to Capcom to go ahead and do what they do. I I would like to see them 
touch on the old magic and actually make it survival horror again. Um, if not, you know, shoot, anything else that's out there, Capcom. Clock Towers is yours. Dino Crisis is yours. I'm just All right. Power Stone 3, please. Red, a, Rival Schools 3, please. Yep. Yeah. With that last 45 seconds, you know, thank you for watching the video. Please hit subscribe below if you liked it. Um, sorry, we couldn't be more entertaining, but we always welcome comments and feedback. Again, this is the Reverend. This is the theme here. And this is Green Mouse One. Go ahead, Once again, for the benefits of Common Sense Lodge King Gaming, credits.